Hey everyone, Ricardo here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to perform a load flow study using the ATAP software. Now in a previous video I went over how to build the model that we're going to be using in this example, so check out that video first if you want to learn how to build this model from scratch. But in this video we're only going to be focusing on how to run the load flow study. Now the purpose of a load flow study is to determine the steady state operation of a power system. In other words, we want to see how the power flows through the system under various system conditions, which is where the name comes from. Now some of the key things that we want to get from a load flow study is to see what whether there's big voltage drops across the system and to see whether any parts of the system are being overloaded. We can then of course use this information from the load flow study to size equipment properly, determine optimal operating conditions, and even take into account different system contingencies. Now there's different mathematical methods for calculating how power flows through the power system. For example, there's the gauss saddle method and the newton raphson method. But thankfully nowadays we have software that can do these calculations for us so that we can focus on the results rather than the mathematical calculation. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. I'm gonna be showing you how you can use the ETAP software to run a load flow study in an example power system. All right, so let's jump into the software and let's see how we can run the load flow study. All right, so again, I showed you how to build this model from scratch in a previous video, so make sure to check out that video first if you wanna learn how to build this model from scratch. But again, this video, we're gonna be focusing just on the load flow study. Now remember that ETAP has many different modes for running different types of studies or editing the model. So to run a load flow study, let's go to this icon over here, which is for the load flow study. So if you click on that, that takes you to this view over here, which is where you can run a load flow study. And once you're in this mode, you can see that the menu over here on the right changes. So it gives you a few different options for the load flow study specifically. Now, ETAP lets us define the types of buses in our model. And this is especially important for running low flow studies because our model needs to have a swing bus. So ETAP needs this to be able to run the load flow study. At least one of the buses in our model needs to be a swing bus. And this, by the way, is true for any software package. There must always be a swing bus in the model for you to be able to run a load flow study. And remember just from power system analysis that a swing bus, which is also sometimes called a slack bus, is a reference bus in our model at which the voltage magnitude and the phase angles are assigned to a fixed value. Typically, we would assign this at one per unit for the voltage magnitude and zero degrees for the A phase phase angle. Now the meaning of the swing bus is that it represents a large generator which has ample capacity to maintain the system's voltage and frequency no matter what the load is. So when we run the load flow study, that bus that we define as the swing bus is going to have the fixed voltage magnitude and the fixed phase angle that we define no matter what the load in the system is. Now for our case, that's this bus over here which is connected to the utility equivalent. So let me just go ahead and open that. And you can see over here that under operating mode for the utility equivalent, that's set up as a swing bus. So again, that's very important because the ETAP needs this to be able to run the load flow study. So let me just close this out. And in our system, we have two feeders. They are these two feeders down at the bottom. Each one of those has a 40 MVA load at a power factor of 0.8. So once we run the load flow study, we would expect our swing bus, which is the only source in this model, to provide at least 80 MVA of power so that it can feed these two loads. So let me zoom out a little bit and let's go over here to run the load flow study. We can do that by clicking this button over here and that's basically gonna run the load flow study for our model. Now notice here that, and let me actually zoom in a little bit more, Notice that as we expected, the voltage on this bus over here is one per unit. We can see that in the results of the load flow study. And that's of course, again, because this is a swing bus. So again, no matter what the load is on our system, this bus voltage is always gonna be one per unit. Now the results here for the load flow, as you can see, are given in kilowatts and kilovolt ampere reactive. So we can actually show the units for these numbers over here by clicking unit over here on the right. So if we click this now, that adds the units to our results. And if we go over here and click on display, we can actually change what units are being shown for the results. So for example, I can say, show me the kilowatts and kilovolt ampere reactive, but show the units in the results. So now you can see that this changed to 63,000 kilowatts, 52,000 kilovolt ampere reactive. So it's now showing the units for this. Now, Something else that I can do is I can change this. If we go back to the display units, I can change this to KVA. And I also want to show the power factor. 
So I can click OK and you can see now that the result changed to KVA and the power factor. So basically this result over here is telling us that this source is providing 82,000 KVA or 82 MVA. So pretty close to our load, which is 80 MVA. Remember that we have two loads over here. Each one of them has a rating of 40 MVA. So the combined load for this is 80 MVA. And we can see that the source is providing 82 MVA. And the reason, of course, for this mismatch is that there's also losses in the system, both in the cables and the transformer in our example. But the losses, of course, should be fairly low in comparison to the load itself, which it is in this case. So we have basically 2 MVA of losses throughout the system compared to 80 MVA of load. So now that we have the results for our example, one thing that I want to look at is, for example, are we overloading the transformer? So if I scroll down over here to the transformer, we can see that the power flowing through it is this number over here, 82.15 or 16 MVA. And we also see here that the rating of the transformer is 100 MVA. So even at full load, the transformer's rating is above the load. So meaning it's not being overloaded. Now this is just one of the examples of the checks that we can make by running a load flow study. We can make sure that the equipment is sized properly. Now let's do one more thing. We can also check the rating of this cable over here to make sure that we're not overloading that cable. So if I double click on this cable, I can see if I go over here to opacity, I can see that the rating of that is roughly 4,200 amps. So roughly 4,200 amps. That's this number over here. So what I want to make sure is that the load that's flown through that cable does not exceed that number. So if we go back to the results over here, again, the results here are given in KVA. To change that though, I can go over here to display and I can say, don't show the results in KVA. I want to see what the amps are. So I can change this to amps, click OK. And now the results over here change to amps. And I can see that the current flowing through the cable is 3,438 amps, which of course is below the rating, which is roughly 4,200 amps. So basically we've also checked that the cable is not overloaded. Now the other key thing that a load flow study helps us assess is to see whether the voltage profile across the system is within acceptable limits. So for example, we can see here that on the 13.8 kV bus, this bus down here, the voltage is 95.74% of the nominal voltage. So roughly 0.96 per unit voltage at full load. Now this is within 5% of the nominal voltage. So generally this is accepted. We're basically saying when the system is fully loaded, the voltage drop on this bus is not going to be greater than this number, which is within 5% of its nominal rating. So we can accept this value, meaning we can say that the system is designed properly such that the voltage profile across the system is within acceptable limits. And of course, again, the voltage in this bus is going to be one per unit. That's because we fixed it. Essentially, that's the swing bus. We can see that the voltage on this bus is 99.99%. The voltage at this bus is 95.76%. And of course, the furthest bus from the source has a lower voltage in this case, 95.74%. But again, that's within 5% of the nominal voltage. So we can say that that's acceptable. Now, the last thing that I want to show you for this load flow example is how to export reports that show you the results for this load flow study. Now, to get a full summary of the load flow study, you can click over here in the report manager. That's this button over here. And you can go over here to results and load flow report. And you can select the format in which you want to see those results. I'm just going to click here on the viewer. You can click OK. And that's going to bring up another window with the results for the load flow study. That's this window over here. And you can see over here that basically we have the different buses in our system. We can see what the voltage magnitude is, what the voltage angle is, and also the loads at each one of the buses and the load flow through the system. So this gives you basically a summary of the load flow study for your system. Now you can also get other types of reports. Again, if you go back here to the report manager, for example, you can go over here to summary and you have many different types of reports here, depending on the type of information that you want to get from your load flow study. So it just depends on what type of information you're trying to get from your study. But again, ETAP gives you many different options for analyzing the results of the load flow study. All right, so that's how you run a load flow study, also known as a power flow study using the ETAP software. If you want to learn more about power engineering or power system production control, check out our online courses on our website. We have courses on power system analysis, power electronics, and power system production and control. And as always, make sure to like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more videos about power engineering and power system production and control. And we'll see you in the next one.